Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to look at polymorphism, which is really a fancy name for the fact that we can call the same method name and with different parameters, and the method will do different things depending on the parameters passed in. If we look at the code below, print 6 multiplied by 5 and print hello multiply by 5. The method there's a method being called inside the print brackets which is the multiply method so if we think about it the first method is actually saying call a method called mult and multiply six by five and the second one is saying call a method called mult or, or multiply or whatever it translates to and pass in parameters hello and five and we know that the first uh, statement will re result in the number 30 Whereas the second statement results in hello, 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 hello. So it's interesting that the same method, the multiply, knows to return an integer when two integer parameters are passed in, whereas it will return a string type if a string and integer is passed in. So the same method, the multiply method, is doing different things depending on what the parameters are that are coming in. Now, I know we don't necessarily view it like that because we just see 6 star 5, but 6 star 5, when it's called by the Python compiler, is converted into this multiply thing. And the multiply thing will do different things depending on what parameters come into it. If we wanted to look at a more complex example, we could think about playing an audio music file. If we had a method called play that played a particular audio file, the instruction to play it could be as simple as audio underscore file dot play open bracket close bracket, which is fine. But the problem is different um, audio files uh, have to be played by different players, or at least the players have to be aware of what kind of file it is, because different f audio files are compressed in different ways. MP3, WMAs and AUG files are compressed in using different compression algorithms. And some aren't compressed at all, like WAV files. So the player needs to know how to decompress if it's compressed and know, needs to know not to decompress if it isn't. So ideally what we'd like is to have a, always use the play method, but um, for different audio files to to play, that the program would know to, to play it in the appropriate way, given the audio file type. So a handy way of thinking about this is to think use inheritance to create the polymorphism element. So to start off with a, a superclass called audio file and create subclasses that represent the various audio file types we want to take care of. So in this picture here, which is a little bit of UML, we can see, and this is, a, this is showing the audio file type, and it has one method in it, it's the INIT method. And then the, the triangle underneath means the classes below inherit from that. So we have MP3 file, WAV file, and AUG file. And they all have their own version of a method called play. They also have the INIT, because they inherit that from audio file, the, the super class. And whatever other methods and any attributes that the audio file would have as well. The key thing is, though, the method name is the same play. And it depends on how it's called, it depends on which play is used. So if we wanted to imagine what the code would look like for the audio file, the initialization class, it takes in a file name and a self, but the self is just the method itself. And then it checks if the file name has a known extension. If it doesn't have a known extension, so if not, a uh, file name extends, uh, has a recognizable extension, then we raise an exception. We'll remember we did exceptions before, and an exception is a way of crashing out of the program a little bit gracefully. So here we're printing out a message invalid format or unknown file type, whatever we want, invalid format is grand. So if we don't know the file type, if we don't recognize it, so if we tried to play a, a file name with the extension dot banana, it wouldn't know what that is, so it crashes out. Otherwise, it will set the file name passed into the current file name's file name. Okay, so the key points here are we're checking if the file name is a known one, 
and that the there is a, a, a an attribute called AXT, which is the extension, and that is set in each of the subclasses. We'll see that gets set in a minute. If it's not a known one, then we'll raise an exception. But if it is a known one, then we just set the file name to the to the to the file value passed in. Now let's look at each of the three subclasses that inherit audio file. Well, the class MP3 file is an extension or a, a subclass of audio files, so audio files in brackets. The extension is in commas MP3, which means we're telling it it's an MP3 file, so that's what the superclass looks for. And then we have a play method, and all the play method is doing at the moment is just printing out a message saying we're playing the particular audio file. The WAV file is exactly the same, except we change the extension to WAV. And we say we're playing it as a WAV. And then the OG file is the same, except we say we're playing it as an OG. So then if we declare an instance of an MP3 file, uh, the file name is myfile.mp3, and we're declaring a variable called MP3, and we say mp3.play, it'll say it's playing that file as an MP3, which is correct. If we tr declare an instance of WAV, which is uh, of WAV type, and we play that, it's saying it's playing it as a WAV. But if we declare an AUG file, but we declare it using the MP3 file class, then we know that that isn't the extension that will try and create is MP3, which doesn't match .ogg, so then it will bomb out, which is perfect. So polymorphism works when it works, but when you try and pass in a parameter, it doesn't recognize it won't work. So that's polymorphism. It's a really effective technique um, for the user experience because they don't have to know how different bits are implemented. If they're multiplying two values, two numbers, it'll multiply two numbers. If they're multiplying a string and a number, it knows what to do. We could conceive of creating the multiply so that it multiplies matrices and multiplies each row by each column. So the flexibility is the real power of polymorphism and in Python is so well implemented, so clear and so effectively useful. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.